But right now we want to go from some congressional candidates to a member of Congress and the long delayed and long debated plans for unprecedented federal safety net programs and the spending that comes with them. And so we switch our phone lines to <laughs> Congresswoman Maria Salazar of Miami, yeah. Miami Dade, Miami Beach, 27th Congressional District. Congresswoman, you there with us? I am here. Sorry that I cannot see you. I, w I was ready. I put my makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Thanks for rocking and rolling. But you used to do this. So you yeah, know that television yeah, comes with technical aspects sometimes. Yeah. So great to have you. And in the yeah. COVID area, yeah. the COVID era, even worse. So we cannot cover all the areas that we want. But I'm delighted to be here, even mm -hmm. though um, you cannot see me, you can only hear me. Well, we regret that as well. All right, Congresswoman, let's ask you the big question. Uh, next week, perhaps on Tuesday, that you and your fellow House members are going to vote on the president's Build Back Better plan, uh, $1.75 trillion for social programs, including, you know, a lot of money for things that people in your district uh, really need and would appreciate. For example, you have more people enrolled in Obamacare in your congressional district, I think, than any other in the United States. And under the Build Back Better plan, uh, their vision uh, problems and hearing problems would be paid for through Medicare, which they are not now. So uh, that's a good thing. Would you vote for that plan and that provision? Well, I have uh, major concerns with this reconciliation plan. You know why, Buddy? Because what they're trying to do is that they're trying to change the founding spirit of this country. I'm not against helping people that are enrolled in Obamacare. I'm, if you like your Obamacare, you keep it. I'm not in, in, uh, against helping the disabled or the veterans or the people that need a hand up. But the problem is that this bill is going to change the founding spirit of America. How, how so? How would it change? Oh, how it? so? Because we are a nation that was founded on the principle of pursuit of happiness when you're standing on your own two feet. We are a nation that needs to for you to go to work every morning like you and I and Glenna did for 35 years. We are a nation that is founded on the individualism, on you finding your own path. So you have. So what are we uh, doing now, Cong we doing Congresswoman? Now? Wait, 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 I, I understand yeah. you, and I've actually heard you say this that you think there are many parts of this plan that encourages government dependency. So I want to. Oh, absolutely. So I want to drill down with you. Oh, let me drill down with you a little it. bit on those details because uh, yeah. you know I, I will say we're trying to keep up with the changing complexion of what's in and what's out and and I'm going to just throw out there I don't think anybody who isn't in that room knows really at the moment what's in what's out but there are a couple of low hanging headlines that you know what's in things like universal pre K things like child care support there's a timeline now mm -hmm. so the 6 year timeline and so when you say it encourages government dependency, might it also assist those who are most vulnerable or most challenged who need help to be independent? Well, we have programs that do exactly as you said, Glenna. We came out of a COVID experience for 18 months. We spent last year six trillion dollars to help people who were in that situation right now we have six billion dollars in tallahassee that cannot be used that could be put to use for something else whether it's infrastructure i mean each state has billions of dollars standing there that cannot be used for anything else and florida as i said we have six billion dollars Inflation, look at inflation, the highest one in the last 30 years. This is not a high class problem, like the Biden administration said the other day. This is an, an everyone problem. Everything indicates that Thanksgiving is going to cost the average American family more than any other time in history. Okay. Gas is 40 percent. We, We're paying now three dollars. California is paying six dollars per gallon. Yeah, we, so you're going to tell me that we need to put more money into the economy? Well, People, hey, listen, wait, wait, wait. There are 10 million jobs available. Yeah, and there are we, 8 we million understand, Ameri Congresswoman, so then, so I beg your pardon. Me, we understand a lot of things. Sure. A lot of things are out of whack in this country, mostly as a result of 18 months of a pandemic of the COVID. 
But uh, let me let's go back to this bill because you know you have said that it is a socialist spending spree. In fact, if this works, most of this would be paid for by millionaires. Uh, you know, if they would pay an extra five percent, people who make more than ten million dollars a year would pay an extra five percent. People who make more than twenty-five million a year would pay an additional three percent. Uh, and that's how, along with people who earn 400000 or more, would also pay additional income taxes. So there is a mechanism here to pay for uh, what we're talking about. I mean, do you, do you think that is fair, that tax? Listen, Mike Pudney, if this bill was to be so good, then the Democrats would have passed it a long time ago. Why isn't this happening? Why do you have a senator well, because Manchin? you have Joe Why? Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, well, but, among okay, others let's, who let's don't like it. Let's put that aside. Let's talk to the House. Why then, Madam Speaker, Nancy Pelosi does not have the votes to pass this. Because you have 8 million Americans that are claiming unemployment and you have 10 million jobs available. Because you know very well that people cannot find truck drivers or people to go in their body shops or in their hair salon. You know that people just don't want to work because there's so much money in the economy that it's a lot better to stay at home watching television than going to work. That is that not actually, the American spirit. Can I just jump in here? There, there are absolutely some people that do what you just said. We have spoken to them. But factually speaking, that is not the issue in this COVID recovery period. It's, it's more complicated than that. A lot of people can't go back to work because they don't have childcare and their children are home is just one example. So, you know, instead of being a political black white kind of thing, it is a very complicated, to your point, calculation to make all this work. But it, in what they're trying to do and in the mansion and cinema holdup versus the progressives who want much more of those kind of government safety nets, there, there is a calculation to come to as a compromise to get something like this done, to get this big lift done. So what, do, what would you tell Speaker Pelosi? What would you say to her you can accept and compromise on and things that you mm -hmm. just would not? You know what I would say to Madam Chairman, uh, Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi? Sit with the Republicans and let's come to an agreement, something that she hasn't done since the beginning of this Congress. And, you know, I've been here for seven months. You know, I was with you for 35 years as a journalist, and I'm reporting it to you the way I see it. We need bipartisanship, something that President Biden promised, and we have not seen it at the committee level and at the floor level. Okay, so, so, but, and so let's say, so let's say the speaker comes to, is listening to our program and comes to you and says, Congresswoman, <laughs> great Congresswoman from the great yeah, state right. of Florida, the, what, what would you like Florida? to see? What would you uh, like to see in this bill? Uh, what could I you sit with here? I want to continue the same economic boom that we had a year ago when more people, there were more 10 jobs, 10 million jobs than hands, when we paid little taxes at the, at the corporate level, when, where a lot, millions of American workers were receiving bonuses from those companies, where the Hispanics were making more money, the African-Americans, the average people that did not have a college degree, everyone was working. But That's wasn't that the before that COVID? Wanted. That was Didn't... before COVID. I mean, 10 so, million correct. people lost their jobs because of COVID. I hear a year you, but, ago. and that's why we poured in six trillion dollars into the economy, and we poured one point nine trillion dollars more at the beginning of this Congress, and that money is there available. So what I'm saying to you is look at inflation. Inflation is the coronavirus of the economy. So I'm this, sure that we have no but let me finish. I we have I'm the sorry, Venezuelans go ahead. listening yep. to you. Go ahead. We have the Venezuelans, Lena. We have the the Argentinians, the Venezuelans, they look what they have the, their believer is worth less than monopoly money. Look at the Cubans where they have two types of currencies. Why? Because of inflation. Most people that are watching this show, guys, have not lived in inflation. But the people that mo some of the people who are in my in District 27, who are my constituents, know exactly what that means. And that is going to destroy the economy that we have created in the last three years. The economy that the average American needs 
pursuit of happiness. So I'm going back to the big principles. Do not mess with the best economy in the world. Why? Because we have the American exceptionality, because we have individualism. We have people that wake up in the morning and want to grab their own future, make their own, their, pay what they need to do in taxes and keep the rest of the money to do whatever they want to. Okay. But now the mentality, what they're, and I go back to my founding phrase, the founding spirit of this country is being undermined, and I cannot vote for that. I will vote for specific programs for people that need it, the disabled, the people that cannot go to work because they don't have, they don't have child care, people that need health care, people that need it, but no dependency. Understood. Okay. We come got, from the got, banana got republic. Got that republic. message. No, but so, I want to give you more. You banana republic. We, we got, we we got a time clock we're looking at. I want to ask what, you another what question. Is yeah. When I'm not even, I'm not yet. Let's go to Cuba. Let's go to Cuba. We need leadership in Cuba. And I have said it, and I am saying it again to those Democrats, Cuban Democrats, Nicaraguan Democrats. I need leadership from the Biden administration. And I told them repeatedly uh, on the phone, say, listen, Congressman Salas, our proud Republican, will give you all the credit if you show two things, leadership and connectivity for the Cubans. Yeah. This is another Bay of Pigs. But July Congresswoman, 11th. Congresswoman the, the, the Biden administration essentially has not changed anything from the Trump policy on Cuba. They've imposed sanctions. They have sanctioned Gaisa, the My branch Rodney, of the military the Trump administration. Branch Trump that never runs had through the him. opportunity. Look, Trump never had the opportunity that Biden has had on July 11th. Well, what should he do? July 11th, I'm going to tell you exactly what they can do and they're not doing it. And I am very upset. And I have told them, you can do this. And I will give you all the credit to the Biden administration because I don't care what political party we're talking about. We're talking about helping the Cubans be free. And I have gone to the Black Caucus. And I have said to Cory Bush and to AOC and to, and, and to, and to uh, uh, Congressman uh, Hakeem Jeffries, help me with the Afro-Cubans. I do not want the Afro-Cubans to be beaten on the streets. And you saw those pictures, and I would like you, if it's possible, to show the pictures that came out in Cuban television. The Cuban television, those, those thugs with bats in their hands saying this is what we're going to use against those poor people who are going to come out November 15th to only scream freedom. How come? Where's the Biden administration? I don't see it. And I have called them and I have said, OK, no leadership of this two connectivity. Where's the Internet? There are the stratospheric balloons, the ones that want and, and the Cubans announced it already that they're going to be shutting down the Internet. So where's okay, connectivity? So oh, it's too hard. Speaking, it's impossible. Of, speaking of shutting down the Internet, what? I yeah. regret <laughs> to tell you we need to shut down for a break because it's always mm -hmm. so fascinating to speak with you <laughs> and see where the conversation kind of meanders, but promise that you'll come back when we can actually see you. I, w I will okay. go back whenever you guys want me, when and you we'll can see me and you can see the wonderful makeup on that I put on on a Sunday morning. <laughs> send, put it up on, on Twitter. Send, send me a little tweet Thank there. You. Okay. All right, Congresswoman. Thank, you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to my <laughs> constituents and to Thank you. Thank you so much.